It's really hard, but it's actually a really good experience because you get to want to appreciate how hard it is. No, I don't think I follow a formula. I just... Uh... I'm Larry Goulder. I play piano and guitar. I started out with guitar when I was five years old and uh, started out on piano when I was 12. So I played the cello and when I was younger I used to play the piano. I'm Ted Ferrucci, I am uh, director of instrumental music here at Los Altos High School. This, this is me. I play the piano and the guitar. I've always wanted to compose a real piece of music for other musicians to play. I've written dozens of little tunes, but they're always confined to just piano and guitar. I want to explore what it takes to compose for a quartet. Will knowing guitar help me with the cello? Will knowing some piano help me with everything else? I don't play any of these instruments, but with the help of these guys, I hope to write a small piece for a quartet to play. I played piano for about four or five years. Um, I really enjoyed that, and it's like it's also something that's really helpful for like classical music in general because you learn like the different clefs and you learn just different types of musical things that help you even with cello. But um, I also just picked up a lot, um, just hearing music, and and so I started picking up songs that I'd hear, and then I started composing just. I don't know, I didn't really have any formal training in how to compose popular music, but I just did it. I teach in all the classes, um, but there's much more conducting and kind of give and take artistically in those classes. Um, because the students are at more advanced level, we can kind of really delve deeper into the music um, and really work on expression and, and the kind of the, really the, uh, the aesthetic of, of, of music. I had been playing in the 7th and 8th grade orchestra when I was in 5th and 6th grade and then I also joined the California Youth Symphony and I have been playing in that ever since 8th grade. But then when I was in college I got really interested in learning more about composition so I spent two years at a conservatory uh, in France. I studied classical form and um, sort of learned a lot more theory and the rules of composition. Composing and specifically arranging, I really enjoy arranging and that's taking already composed music and kind of putting your own twist on it and, and bringing it to your ensemble. It's hard to say whether the kinds of music that I write, which is usually for small numbers of instruments or a small number of singers, would carry over to an orchestra, but I tend to think that uh, a lot of it is best kept as small ensembles because they're relatively few parts. So, where do I begin? When I'm writing for piano and guitar, I usually hear it as a song for piano and guitar. In those cases where I've written for other instruments, though, I try to imagine hearing the other instruments even though I may be working it out on the piano. And actually, there have been some times where I've written a song on the piano, but it's been for, let's say, flute and voice, or cello and flute and voice. And then it's been great because when I hear it actually on those instruments, in those cases, it sounded even better than I expected. It takes a while for you to see that you can actually do it, but by the end, if you can do it, and if you get it down and you get it perfected, then it's just a really, really good feeling because you can look back and you can look and see how far you've come. 
cellists read in three different clefs, actually. Their home clef is the bass clef. Okay. The next clef, however, looks like this. This is what's called the tenor clef. You can see that it looks similar. Well, I'd probably start by working on a melody and putting some harmony under it and see how I like it, see if it sounds good. And, uh, just keep experimenting a little bit. One, the teacher I mentioned, Nadja Boulanger, often said that composition is a matter not of creating music, but of finding the music that's already out there. And there's a way in which that's true. You kind of, at least I kind of, have a feeling for a song and it's just kind of finding it. And uh, there's no formula that I have. Uh, it's just certain things sound right and certain things sound different. I guess one thing I learned is um, uh, in taking harmony classes, I learned some rules of harmony about what sounds good and what doesn't. And you can find those rules, put them on paper, but it's interesting. In some sense, those rules come after the fact. For me, I was doing a lot of those rules without knowing the rules. It just happened to sound good, and then later I learned why they sounded good. But I was already doing it because my ear told me, oh, that feels good, or that, that's satisfying. So it's sort of just a feeling, it's sort of like why some people feel that certain composition in a painting feels right or doesn't feel right. It's, it's just there. And then later you can come up with rules that say, well, things shouldn't be always exactly symmetric. Something should be off a little to the side. You can come up with that, but it's already after the fact. It's, that's, people already have these sensibilities. Um. Well, each each instrument has kind of has a natural range, and I you know I don't know getting into into too specifics, but um, you know one thing to, to keep in mind when you are arranging for an ensemble is sure this part can be played by this instrument, but is it in a range that's they're able to play it comfortably, or am I asking really a lot of the ensemble that I'm writing for? I've now taken those two chords and transformed them into something I can play on the piano. From there, I can start writing my music for cello, viola, and two violins. Well, I think there's some great software available because you can set up your score the way you want it. You can choose the instruments that you want to use and then you can kind of write a violin line. Add the add the cello line, whatever you want to do, you can hear how they sound together. And if you don't like it, you, it's cut and paste. You pull it out, you try, you start over. Also, the most important thing is you want to take into consideration how the instruments are going to blend and how their, their voices are going to um, sound together when you're, when you're putting things together. So that's the, really the, the blend and balance is what I'm thinking mostly about when I'm arranging for, for an ensemble. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 